Hello everybody and welcome back to Gladys Chess to part 3, I believe, of the crew skills and perks training here on World of Tanks, Xbox One, and PS4. Uh, today we're going to look at the medium tanks. Medium tanks are the jacks of all trades of the battlefield being, well, medium tanks. It's pretty self-explanatory. So there are two different kinds of flavors of medium tanks, as I call them. You have the really well camouflaged, highly mobile medium tanks with very low armor, such as the Leopard 1, and then you have the bigger, uh, less stealthy, well armored, uh, heavy support medium tanks, such as the E50M. As you can see, its armor profile is much, much better than the Leopard 1. Um, and each nation has kind of their own little flavor of medium tanks, um, such as you know, the Soviets are very low profile, very quick firing medium tanks with very low alpha damage, as you can see on the uh, T-34 with only 85 damage. Um, so, uh, enough about the generals of medium tanks. Uh, let's take a look at the skills here. So the first skill you want to get on your medium tanks is repairs. Now, that I would get repairs on medium tanks that are tier 6 or higher. And I have uh, decided to do this watching one of Quickie Baby's videos. Um, so let's take a look at why you want to take repairs on tier 6 and higher medium tanks. Uh, anything tier 5 or lower, I would take camouflage first. Um, so on the T-34, it only has 450 hit points, so if you get hard enough, hit, get hit hard enough, it's going to take probably a quarter to half your health anyway. Whereas the T-34-85 has 670 hit points uh, when you get the turret upgraded, of course. So that justifies, in my opinion, getting repairs, whereas the T-34 uh, can only get camouflage. You can get repairs on your lower tier medium tanks if you want, or if you're planning on taking your uh, the same crew all the way through the line, all the way up to tier 10. Um, but if you decide, like what I did, uh, I kept my T-34. I ended up getting two marks of excellence on it, so I kept it, um, so I got camouflage first. The second skill I would get is six cents. That's all medium tanks. You want to get six cents as soon as possible for... Obviously, because you want to know when it's nice to know when somebody's about ready to shoot you so you can take cover. Uh, third skill I would get would be clutch braking uh, for tanks with really low traverse speeds, such as the E50. In, well, the E50M's got okay traverse. Um, yeah, 44 is pretty good. Uh, oh, here, the Panther, that's a good example. 28 chassis traverse, that's really bad for a medium tank. And that's uh, really a lot of the medium tanks have pretty low traverse speeds. So you want to take uh, clutch braking as soon as you can to kind of help uh, dilute the bad traverse. Um, now, if you are in a medium tank with really high traverse, such as Leopard 1 with a whopping 54 degrees a second, then you probably want to be taking snapshot um, when you flank enemies or when you're trying to pop in and out of cover and take snapshots at people. Uh, the fourth skill I would take would be for whatever you didn't take previously. So if you took clutch braking, take snapshot. If you took snapshot, take clutch braking. Um, or off-road driving. And th this is something uh, to consider if you're driving a tank like my Leopard 1 that's got 54 degrees chassis traverse. It's kind of pointless to get clutch braking on a tank with that high traverse anyway. So, uh, getting off-road driving is probably a better option to keep the ground resistances uh, as low as possible. Uh, where is clutch brake or off-road driving? Right there. So, I haven't got it yet because I'm still getting snapshot, but that will probably be what I get next. Um, medium tanks with your high traverse speed, their biggest downfall is getting bogged down in the mud or the snow or the sand. So, once you get that, I would recommend taking... Uh, safe stowage as your fifth perk unless you're driving a tank like the lever that gets ammo racked every single time it gets shot because it has frontal mounted ammo racks and it has no armor so there's nothing more frustrating or more just uh, agonizing to get one shot with an ammo rack or to be completely crippled with a damaged ammo rack for the rest of the game um, so safe stowage I have is right there. 
says it's more effective with a wet ammo rack, I would agree. Uh, wet ammo rack gives you 50% durability to your ammo rack, and safe stowage gives you 13%, I think. Don't quote me on that. Um, it's still a good thing to have. Um, I don't have it on my E50M yet because it's kind of an oddball high tier medium tank. Uh, my next skill I would take is Brothers in Arms. Um, at once you get some skills on there, Brothers in Arms is probably the better one to get. Uh, seventh skill I would get is Camouflage, as I have on the Leopard 1, because it's got a pretty good base camouflage uh, as it is. Um, situation awareness for medium tanks that have worse camouflage, like the E50M or the Panther, where you can see the uh, on the right side of the screen the camouflage rating. Um, so, like the Panzer 4 it's got pretty good camo, so I would probably get uh, Camouflage skill instead of like I have right there, instead of Situation Awareness. Um, the eighth skill I would take is probably, on the Leopard 1 specifically, I would probably take either Green Thumb or... Let's see, where is it? Oh, uh, it's on there somewhere. Muffled Shot. Because it's already pretty stealthy as it is. Um, now, for larger medium tanks with poor camouflage rating like the E50M, I would probably take Recon or Deadeye. Uh, to increase the view range because um, you're going to get spotted pretty easily when you're driving something this big so uh, whatever you can do to spot them before they spot you is probably the best option to take in these really big supporting tanks, medium tanks uh, and then the uh, ninth skill I would get is green thumb for the stealthy medium tanks uh, such as the leopard one uh, or preventative maintenance. Uh, so a lot of medium tanks are prone to engine fires, especially the E50M. Or not the E50M, the E50 is. The E50M is not very prone to engine fires because of the lower plate. So the Panther is a great example of that. With a front-mounted engine or a front-mounted transmission. So that's a really easy way to get lit on fire. So uh, taking preventative maintenance is definitely a good idea on your medium tanks. Uh, the Soviet tanks are also prone to engine fires, and the Chinese tanks are really prone to engine fires. Um, a couple optional skills, if you don't want to take the ones that I've suggested, uh, you could take either, let's see here, I would recommend either Adrenaline Rush, which gives you a quicker rate of fire when you've got below 10% of your health, um, or Intuition, which uh, lets you load faster. Now, something about Intuition... So if you are loading a shell and you switch shell types, it, intuition does not work. It only works if you've completely loaded a shell and you decide, oh crap, there's an E100, I need to shoot heat at him. And then you switch shell types after you've already loaded. And there's only about a 15 to 20% chance that the shell will be loaded instantly without having to go through the whole reload cycle. So it's 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 okay, it's, it's good to have it, but it's really, really situational and there's a lot better stuff you can get instead of adrenaline rush and intuition. Um, but again, that's my opinion. Do what you will with your medium tanks. Um, I think that'll about wrap it up for this one. So uh, thank you so much for watching, and uh, I will have the heavy tanks coming up very shortly. Thanks for watching Gladys Chest, and take care out there.